I'm at the Peanut Butter Palace with Caitlin Fogarty, founder of Regenerative Designs. We will discuss everything the business offers and ways to practice sustainability in your own home. Hi, tell me about yourself and Regenerative Designs. So I am Caitlin Fogarty. I'm the founder and lead designer for Regenerative Designs, which is a permaculture inspired landscaping business. So we try to teach people how to build a mutually beneficial relationships between the natural world and the human built environment. And so that can look like us helping people design and install food forests or native landscapings or just different types of edible gardens. inspired you to create this organization? So I've been in the organic food movement for a long time. I started out working on organic farms. And if you've ever visited an organic vegetable farm, you know that it's lots and lots of work, really long hours. And as I was doing that, I kept asking myself, there has to be a better way to both produce food and meet some of these issues that we're having. And so I, I started learning about permaculture, which is this idea of designing not only how we grow food, but many of our other systems in a more holistic way. And that kind of brings things together and allows us to achieve many better solutions. And how does Regenerative Designs help support sustainability? We offer many different uh, sort of like services. We can all the way from coming out and just offering you a consultation for an hour or two to help you work through some ideas if you want to DIY it all the way up to we can do a complete personalized design and installation of your yard, helping you build things like rainwater catchment, edible gardens, native pollinator habitat, and really looking at, you know, what are some of the issues and problems you're having? What do you want to see more in your life? You want to have, you know, more time and space for connection to the earth. You want to produce more food. Maybe you have some flooding issues. So we try to really look at everything from this holistic point of view and see if we can create solutions to all of those things in one go. And why do you feel that sustainability is important? Uh, that's a, <laughs> such a big question. There is such a feeling I feel for a, a lot of young people, especially nowadays of disempowerment and kind of like we're screwed a little bit, you know? And so this whole movement is really to co combat that to say, we really have so much power. We really can make a big difference locally with these local solutions that we come together as a community and we create. And that just feels really great. It's easier to sleep at night. What ways do you feel that Central Florida residents can have a impact on the sustainability in their lives? There are many great organizations locally that can help you get started today, whether that's things like O-Town composting or fleet farming. You know, they can come out and help you start composting or growing food right away. Our business is really focused on this more long-term goal of looking at what are a lot of these problems that uh, we are really not connecting, but could be connected to really create this regenerative future. Um, something like, you know, right now we tend to think of food security and maybe like flooding issues and also climate change. We think of those as really separate things, but how can we start to integrate those and create solutions that take care of all of them. And a lot of times this is more empowering to us locally and it also can even save us money. Tell us about some of the educational and volunteer opportunities that you have here. Sure, so we do have a blog. So that is one way we try to connect and educate our, our readers and, and share things and hope that they get inspired. And then we also have a program called CARES. It's an acronym for Community Supported Agroforestry for a regenerative economy, which is a, a big mouthful, but it's this idea that um, we're creating green streets. So we're creating street plantings along sidewalks that produce food. They help fight climate change. They provide more livability. So when you go outside your house, you feel like this is a beautiful, abundant place to live and walk and take your kids to school. And so that would be a way people could come out. They can help volunteer and build those with other community members and they may even want to have one installed in their neighborhood. Can you tell me a bit about the difference between organic gardening and permaculture? Sure. So organic gardening a lot of times is really great, but it, it kind of doesn't take into account what environment we live in. So the organic gardening instructions for, say, a place like Maryland, 
versus Florida may be very similar. You're trying to grow very similar plants and vegetables, but meanwhile, our outside ecosystem is radically different. So at permaculture, we really try to look at what type of native ecosystem is here and as best as possible, how can we mimic some of those relationships and what's going on there to benefit us, to make food growing easier and more fun. And so we also try to introduce people to a lot of perennial crops, things like perennial spinaches, maybe fruits they've never had before that are really yummy, very nutritious, that grow here in an abundance and just makes life better for everybody. What kind of communication opportunities do you have for the residents or people in Central Florida to be able to communicate with your organization or stay in touch? So we have a website. We also have Facebook, Instagram. Um, people can always email us. We're, um, I'm out a lot at a lot of different events, so I'm always really happy to just talk with people, discuss, partner with different groups to create more opportunities. Tell us about the Peanut Butter Palace and what you have going on here. Sure. So this is my home site. I live with four other people. Um, the big part of this is we try to live really intentionally. So we try to have open communication and some other things that's you know a little bit separate from what we've been talking about before. But then we also have many different components of permaculture. So I use this site to teach classes and to do experiments. We also have some local people who come here and actually use plots to garden themselves as a way to learn. And so we can look at some things like water catchment, um, some of our food forests and things like that.